As advertised, Michael Langston here on Wake Up War Chant to talk recruiting. Also a standalone video on our YouTube channel. So you could have listened to this. Hopefully it works out. You could have heard it before on the Wake Up War Chant podcast, which you should subscribe to. Uh, if not, welcome to YouTube. Here it is. Michael, how are you, man? It's been a minute since we've hung out. <laughs> it has. Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, you know, so we're finally starting to get some, you know, meaningful home games. And certainly, uh, you know, you saw that with, you know, last few weekends as far as hosting visitors. And, you know, now, you know, we got a big one. You know, you got the next two big week, home week, weekends. There's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, top prospects. Uh, and, and FSU's just rolling. I mean, they just got it rolling. They, they've done everything I think they wanted to do to, to get to this point. Now, um, you know, now they get the – go maybe take a step further with uh these recruits and in their season and really just uh take a big jump six and oh ranked top 20 team comes to town prime time game i don't know if we're at the point where this might be a bigger weekend for visitors than the miami game which is miami's fault not florida state's fault so figure it out <laughs> down there coral gable but before we talk about this coming weekend uh, michael let's reflect maybe on last week i know it was a maybe a smaller contingent of future classes down the line uh, but who were some of the big names that were on campus for the Syracuse game? And what sort of progress did Florida State make for uh, those players in the maybe the 25 class? Yeah, I think there was a, a handful of uh, 2025 guys that were really good. But the guy that, that I got circled that we found out late that visit was four-star defensive tackle Artavius Jones. He's a Miami commit. Um, ironically, uh, you know, the Miami came coming up. But um, he's a guy that, you know, I think they're – this was one that I felt like the Nita was being moved um, where uh, he was much more interactive with FSU fans afterwards, even chopping it up and, you know, doing, taking pictures. And, and uh, you could tell like uh, there was a different in, uh, excitement level, you know, the way he thought about FSU. And I, I really think, um, I think the momentum is, is pretty strong uh, with FSU. I think a, a flip is, is very possible even, to the point I'd say uh, likely um, based on how things are trending to one with Miami, but also just what the FSU defense line looks like. The product looks like on the field. Uh, this is a perfect game for him to visit because it was really dominated by the defense as far as uh, you know what they did in, in the game. And I think, I think the fact that they're not far away from home is, is certainly an attractive thing, but I think also, what the way he feels about Odo Higgins is a big deal um, throughout this process. Why he's kept visiting. It's why he's been here a few times in the spring and then, you know, come for this game and he's coming next week for the, the Duke game. And I think that's a, if, if that happens, I think I was kind of close to maybe saying, Hey, it's going to likely going to be FSU. But I think if he does visit, I think I would lean towards the, Hey, this is going to happen for FSU and it's looks likely. So, I think some big momentum, uh, you know, building there for FSU with, with Artavius Jones and, and kind of what they're doing on the field. Artavius Jones, 6'2", 285 out of Blount, uh, Blountstown, rather, uh, four-star consensus guy. I, I don't want you to put, like, a specific date on him, Michael, but if he were to flip, do you think it would come after, like, soon after a visit, or would it be one of those things where when it comes to signing day on December at that point, he would then, you know, kind of flip? Yeah, there's no indication that it's imminent, like, right away, but, I mean, it could come – it could certainly come at any time. And like, if he visits again and you get a big win and he just feels like, Hey, this is everything I need. Then I could see pop, but I haven't heard anything that, you know, leads me to believe like, Hey, it's going to be imminent, but I do think, you know, he might take it around and let the process go. But I think things are trending the right way that there's not a timetable. So it could pop or either way, th this thing's feeling like, um, you know, outside of something surprising happening or Miami turning around the season or something, I think um, it's starting to trend, you know, in a positive direction for FSU. I just don't know a timetable on it, but um, I would just say it could come at any time, just really when he feels right. Well, one of the big headlines from last week, Michael, uh, the, that vaunted, coveted fifth star given to Luke Cromenhawk, uh, yeah. Cal, some might say of that. Uh, 24 class, but when you got KJ Bold and Charles Lesser, it's really hard to identify who's the biggest name on there. But what does it mean to Florida State's class to be able to? Does it matter to other recruits when, you know, obviously Luke's film speaks for itself and the programs that are interested in him, but when he gets like that fifth star, is that is that most just for the fans to feel good about, or is that something that can help out Florida State's chances recruiting other players? 
I, I think it's more so for the fans uh, that, like, I think a lot of people viewed Luke as, like, a five-star talent anyway, you know, just from a recruit standpoint. They all, he's very well-liked. There's a lot of guys that know what, what his talent is. He's played, you know, teams both in Georgia, Alabama, and even, you know, some in, in Florida. So I think most of them thought, like, hey, this is a guy that, you know, we feel is the one of the top players in the country. And, and it's good to see Luke, um, you know, get, you know, what he deserved uh, since he's been there. And it also speak. I think it speaks more to their evaluation of what they do when they evaluate guys that FSU was on him early when he was just a three star, when he was just a guy that, you know, looked good. And you have know, some stuff you could work with, but then, um, you know, the last two years, uh, his, his development as a quarterback is just, you know, taken to another level. When FSU saw some things early that just, felt like the fit was, uh, you know, perfect for FSU. And then they took a chance and they said, hey, this is our guy. And there was a lot of guys that were already rated four and five stars that they could have went after. And Luke was the guy that they just kind of circled and said, hey, this is our guy. And uh, just really uh, built off that. And I think a lot of recruits see that their eyes for talent early as far as how good a guy is and, and how they mesh into the, the system, what FSU is doing. And I think it, that alone, I think, is the biggest takeaway of, their evaluation of talent of of guys that can come in there and help them that are really talented and and not just focus on just the stars at that moment. So I think uh, recruits realize just what they do with evaluations, and I think uh, certainly it certainly brings more buzz when you have you know a five star you know type quarterback. But I think overall, I think it's more about the evaluation of of the player in general. All right, Michael, let's look ahead, I guess, to this upcoming weekend here at Florida State hosting Duke. It'll be a top-20 matchup in Doak Campbell Stadium, primetime, ABC 730. Uh, I don't know if we thought, like, you know, going to the season, there was potential that maybe Duke would be kind of a, a sneaky good team, but I don't know if we would expect a lot of uh, blue-chip kids to descend into Tallahassee for this game. I know you'll be working on a, a visitor's list uh, throughout the week over on the PRB, but what are some of the early buzz, uh, some maybe the possible names that will be on campus for this game, do you think? Yeah, it's going to be a big game. I mean, um, we I had this kind of I had to I had to juggle. I did a top three list during the season. LSU was the first one, and then I put uh, Virginia Tech in there because you felt like Virginia Tech was going to be decent, and it was going to be a you know a game that's around that time. And I knew LJ McRae was visiting you know around that weekend, so you felt like that probably could be the weekend. But then we you saw as we saw Duke get you know have a good season and, and start building. You kind of knew one of those games was going to be a night game, and it turned out it's going to be the Duke game, and um, it's going to be a massive. Uh, I think a, a a very strong group, not as strong as the Miami group, because the uh, the Miami visit weekend is going to be kind of like <laughs> the pinnacle of everything. I mean, you're gonna you're talking about double digit, probably five star prospects that'll be on campus for that game alone. Um, there's going to be tons of guys for that game. You know, Jeremiah Smith, Armando Blunt. You know loads of five stars probably for that Miami game. So nothing will beat the Miami game, but I think this, this weekend will, will compete pretty strongly because I, I think it's a night game. It's a ranked opponent. You're going to see a lot of, a lot of guys in there. I think um, certainly last weekend you had Alvin Henderson, the top 20, 2025 20, guy have a story on the front page. FSU is very high on his list. Um, so people can check that out. I think they're very much in, in the picture. Um, Kevin Wynn, four-star 2025 defensive tackle FSU leads early on for that one. I think they're really good shape for that one. And then they also hosted a 2026 four-star quarterback, Jared Curtis, who I've heard they feel really good about, you know, kind of where they sit. So, but going into this weekend, um, you're going to see big name already talked about. Artavius Jones is going to be there. Um, we'll have a, a extensive list of, of coming up, but there's a, there's a lot of targets I'm just waiting on confirmation from, but I would I would think that you have around three or four or five stars on this campus uh, this weekend. Um, I want to wait until I get the names. I don't want to just start throwing out people, but um, I think it's going to be a very heavily attended uh, you know type of game. I'm talking around 70 prospects. I think you should have around there, and uh, it's going to be some some really big names. And uh, one name I I have heard floated around to me you know the last two weeks is potentially Jordan Seaton, five-star offensive tackle coming in for a visit to check out the Knowles. This is kind of the weekend I've heard, you know, floated around um, that they were working out details of that exact weekend. I think that's a guy I'm, I'm certainly, uh, you know, keep an eye on that, that could be here uh, this weekend. Um, 
I think you could you could see some others in there like you know Jamari Howard that you know possibly comes down and and checks out the Knowles um, for for a game since it's a night game. Um, but I think a uh, four-star DB from Miami Norland that I feel like FSU is in a very good spot with. Um, so those are kind of a few off the top of my head. Naturally, you're going to have a lot of top commitments here. Luke will be here. Cam uh, very much likely will be here. I expect Landon Thomas to be here. Charles Lester, uh, even KJ Bolden has expected that he's likely to come back. Um, he was here a few weeks ago. So I think you'll have a lot of the top commits that are there. And, and I think you'll have some big names that are uncommitted, both 2025 and 2024. 20, uh, I think, you know, guy like four-star wide receiver Jamie French is a possibility from Jacksonville Manor. He's a teammate of Jamel Jones, the quarterback that's committed to FSU, three-star. Um, so I think uh, there's going to be several names that I'm eyeing. Obviously, we'll we'll get the list as we go on this week. I'll probably post that around Tuesday. Um, we'll get the expected guys that are coming from our FSU Intel side of things of, of just confirming of the total list. But I think there's going to be some some big names going to be pretty loaded. I think uh, I think FSU fans are going to be pretty excited about, yeah, I think the type of talent that's that's going to be coming in. I think a lot of it will be 2025 because you got to there be some in there 2024. But I think you got to expect that there's not a lot of room for movement. You're talking about maybe five guys that you can add in the class to finish it off. But I think a lot of it will be 2025. But I think it's going to be some damn good ones, uh, you know, damn good uh, 2025 guys and some mixed in 2024. So um, I think it's a big weekend, uh, especially for it being a night game that uh, I think FSU wants to, you know, make a statement of, of where they're at as a program against the, you know, the rest of the nation. Yeah. It's wild, man. Cause we've been kind of reconditioned now to think that, you know, this incoming recruiting class, like the 24 class is pretty much all said and done. But I mean, you pointing out the fact that perhaps a guy like Jordan yep. Seaton could be on campus for 24 Jamari Howard, Yep. Can also be on campus. That's that's great because these are guys that you could possibly add to your roster here in the next like you know forty five days or so with the way the calendar works out. That early signing period has Seaton been on campus before? Yeah, he went here in the spring. He visited. I want to say around March or, or around that time. Visited um, and you know, got a feel for kind of what they do in practice. I uh, really liked it, but I think really it started searching a little bit with FSU a little more once the kind of the season started that LSU win then then once they got the Clemson win then it started getting kind of more serious where he was you know talking to them more um there, there's several schools involved Florida's area involved Alabama's the leader that we hear in, in in the in the race but I think FSU is certainly a school that's on this mind I think he visited Colorado as well um so um I think there's several schools involved but um certainly FSU is a team that you know, he's always really been intrigued with uh, Coach Atkinson uh, or Coach Atkins, excuse me. And and so there's there's a lot of excitement uh, building around FSU. And he's not alone where it's just guys that haven't visited. I mean, there's been guys that have been mentioned to me that, you know, I'm not ready willing to mention until I get it, see it set in stone that they've confirmed with me. But, you know, there could be some new names on there that 24. Yeah, 20, 2024 that I haven't talked about. They're either committed somewhere or they haven't committed yet that they're come back and they're going to check FSU out in this game. So that's just something to, you know, to keep an eye on. But um, once I get confirmation on, you know, a lot of these visitors and I will certainly um, we're certainly going to pop it up and and break it down uh, throughout this week. We'll have, you know, I'll have a big preview like I always do for these big games uh, for the guys that are coming and, and what to watch. But uh, I think it's going to be a pivotal weekend for FSU to not just show it on the field, but also, you know, make a big impression to uh, either the now of the recruits in 2024 and then the future of, you know, kind of where they're going. And, and we'll kind of be able to tell, like, the pulse of of recruiting of of where these recruits feel about F, where FSU is going. And just the, I mean, is it is it a top five thing or is it like they feel like FSU is the team, you know, national champion type team that they're the guy. So, It'll be interesting to see just kind of the takeaway from recruits and and see if they can get a few commits maybe for 2024 or 2025 from this weekend. Keeping you longer than I promised. I'm sorry, Uh, Michael. Get you out on this one, though. As we record this and talk, we're five days away. As you folks are listening to this, we'll be four days away, I think, right, from LJ McCray, uh, the standout lineman uh, from 
Daytona Beach making his announcement. I know as the week goes on and we get closer to that date, you'll have more information. Right, right. Uh, as we sit here and talk about it, how do you feel about Florida State's chances uh, to land a, a one-time, you know, you know, heavy lean, we thought, to the Gators? Uh, 6'5", 275, uh, defensive lineman out of Mainly. Yeah, he's probably like more like 6'5", 270 um, now. Um, he is massive. Um, looks great. Um, I feel a lot better than I did you know, even when I went to my visit a few weeks ago and I uh, stopped by the school with LJ. It felt good that that was going into his official visit weekend. And then after the official visit weekend at FSU, I started to hear a lot more momentum um, you know, creating and building uh, with FSU compared to what I've been hearing you know, even before the visit or even, um, you know, um, certainly before that, uh, you know, I thought like, you know, Florida, Georgia with the teams I've heard now, it's like you hear it's very, it, it feels very confident in saying like FSU, Florida type of, of battle. And, and it's close. Um, it's not just like, well, you know, Florida's the team mentioned. It's like I hear more excitement uh, around Florida State when it comes to that area but it's it's really close he's keep he's kept things really close to the vest he doesn't share a lot but the the confidence has certainly had has picked up based on the intel I've got you know around the FSU side and then and then Florida I think sustained that they feel like their sustainability of of confidence that hasn't changed much yet um but I think obviously that will change for one of those sides as this week goes on, I'd probably say, you know, around Wednesday or Thursday, I think we'll start, you'll start to kind of see the tea leaves of how this could be uh, developing. But uh, like I said, he, their camp is keeping it very quiet. Um, there's not a lot of uh, chitter chatter, but there is, you know, still the confidence that's sustained from both sides. But I do think I will be surprised if it's, if it's not one of Florida, Florida state, Georgia will be a mild surprise, but still, I think uh, those two teams are the ones that I hear the most frequent buzz around is F with McCray is FSU and Florida. And, and to me, I've said this all year or most of the year, um, McCray to me would kind of really almost make your class close to complete. Um, if you add a guy like that, because that's a premier defensive lineman that can just uh, dominate in so many ways. You have a dominant lineman, you have some dominant DBs, and then you also have some, really good uh, receivers that you have already coming in. The only thing left is maybe so add some linebackers and maybe edge guy here and there. But I think, I think he'd really get that class closer to complete of where they want it. If you add a guy like McCray. I lied last. I mean, Michael, this is crazy. I, I don't know if I've ever seen such disparate opinions on a player. LJ McCray is not a five-star consensus. He's He's five star on on three. We've got him ranked as the number eight overall player in the entire nation for twenty four. Right. A two four seven's got him at number six. Meanwhile, ESPN two ninety three, two hundred ninety third <laughs> rivals two hundred forty nine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't want to make you say like which which part of that do you fall on, but like, how, have they not looked at his film lately? Has he gotten bigger that that that's shot him up the the charts on our side? Uh, that's crazy. I mean, have you ever seen anything that big of a gap in terms of opinion on a kid? I've seen, I've seen bigger gaps, but I, I, th I think there is a disparity where some people have seen him more frequently than others. Certainly on three has seen him in person several times. I think other outlets have as well. I think FSU are, are just on three's done a lot of just, you know, I think his added on size has really, um, really made him a lot more versatile and, and more uh, attractive prospect because he's six five two seventy. You can put him inside. You can put him outside. He's a guy that I, I I think very similar to what I saw out of Leonard Williams out of high school. He does a lot of same things that Leonard Williams does, where you could play Leonard inside, you can play him outside, and so there's a lot more intrigue of of his explosibility as a player. And two, back then I think a year ago when most of these rankings, you know, all of them had him as a four star. I think. Um, you know, he was a good, he was a good edge guy, but now he's like a great one, but he's also now a more complete guy against the run, uh, much more physical, gets off blocks better, has learned more technique as a pass rusher. And I think that's why we see a balloon of, you know, certain outlets having him as like a five-star, like on three, on three was the first, you know, network to have him as a five-star before anybody. And then uh, I think a few others are starting to get close to that to follow suit. But I think, you know, on three's been on that for a while, and I think that's why is the development is game. All right, I told Michael it'd be about ten minutes. We went twenty <laughs> minutes. So, okay. 
uh, hit the thumbs up so Michael's time was uh, well worth it. Michael, man, we uh, appreciate the time as always, and especially the information, man. Thank you. Anytime.